Well, hello there, guys. Today we're going to be drawing a quick, simple, easy picture of Kuroro Lucifer from Hunter Hunter, the enigmatic um, leader of the Jenny Ryodan and possibly one of the most dangerous criminals in the Hunter Hunter world. So we're going to go with one of the larger lean in images of him. So I'm going to be starting by drawing a nice, great big circle in the middle of the page. And this is going to make up the majority of his head. And I won't quite join it up in the middle. But I will stretch it to make it nice and long, more of an oval shape. Now, if I imagine I've got a halfway point around about here from this oval shape, I'll bring a center line right down the middle, and we're going to make this quite a long shot. So I'm probably going to come down a good third of this imaginary oval shape. Pretty much, it curves all the way around like an egg. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's going to come down a good further third from there. So around about this point here. Now, as we sort of standardly do, we're going to draw in some cheeks by curving off the inside edge of this image. And we're going to go just below the bottom of this elliptical shape around about there. Do the same on this side around about here before we bring it in. We're not going to bring it into a point for his face shape, though. We're going to bring it into a slight flat. So the line's going to come just out to the side and up and in for the shape of his face. Now. Kuroro has many guises and different looks and styles, so we're going to be going with his classic look when he's actually openly being the leader of the spider group, as opposed to his undercover look when he often joins the gangs. So if we imagine then the edges where we've had the cheek lines come and meet in, we draw an imaginary line across here. So this is again the bottom third of this egg shape. We're just going to section it off like that, and we're going to have the eyes and most of the features below inside of there. Now, this will also become a point for us to put in the top of the ear. So if we come out and just draw in a rough circular ear elliptical shape round about here, bring it back in to around about this point here. So halfway down the line of the cheeks, and we'll just get the same in up on this side as well. A little bit like so. Maybe the earlobes are going to be a little bit lower like that. And for the eyes. We're going to come in and we're basically going to measure out the center portions of both halves of the face. So if we come down in this particular square we've made here and just portion off a good middle half. And then we'll do the same on this side as well. <clears throat> By getting these two middle half shapes in, it means that we know we're going to have the eyes center and focused and not too far across. And we're going to keep them near the top of this zone. So if you imagine that the eyes are generally flatter along the top before right on the inside edge, they curve down and in, something like this. And it's the opposite on the outside. It's more of a gentle curve all the way around. So if we come out here and just create a circular curving arc all the way around, all the way down and up and in, and then do similar on the other side. So really curves in deep and flat, flattens out along the top and then again it's going to be a slight circular curve that makes its way round and up to the edge of the eye like so and then we can just put the eye another circle in the center and the top of this circle will be hidden by the hood of the eye so around about here like that and on this side around about here like so so just have a little play with that get your shapes in measure it out and put the eyes back on and then that allows us to Use this particular zone that we've made, the bottom of the ear zone for this particular line. Halfway down is going to be where the bottom of the nose is. So if we imagine that this might just come up as a point that goes over to the right before hooking back in gently, still just to the right of the center line, it's going to follow the way up and then it's just going to curve and follow this curve of the eye line up and out ever so slightly. And eventually it's going to become the brow and the top, which is going to sit nice and conveniently on our halfway line. So if we imagine a slight bit of line here following that line curve of the eye, and then we're just going to pop in a brow, which is very short, very thick towards the middle, and just thins out immediately like that. And the same on this side, thick on the middle, on the inside, like a triangular shape, but just shoots straight out and flattens very quickly like so. Excellent. So if we imagine the hood of the eye is going to be a fair bit thicker, so now I'm just going to come round with another layer, thicken off that hood like so, 
allow it to go out into an eyelash point off the left, and maybe make it slightly thicker around the edges of the eye on the inside. We'll have a little divot space there for the tear duct. Same on this side, we're going to go straight ahead and make it much thicker and heavier on the top. Straight out along the top to a point, and again, just drop it in a slight bit of thickness on the eye as it comes around. He has very deep focused eyes. He's quite a focused criminal. Cheeky little <clears throat> reflection spot over the pupil, top left. Same on that side. And then we'll get the pupil itself nice and big on the inside edge for quite the stare. So now we've got the eyes out of the way. Let's go back down to this nose. We've come out, left the middle point undrawn in a little bit and come back up. Probably going to fill it on this one. And then we're going to go just up on the inside left hand edge and just draw in a little shape that will be a nostril. Then on the right, we're going to draw in just a little bit of a shadow zone. So if we pop out to the right, almost nice and flattened out so that it lines up with the inside edge of this eye. And then we'll just float it back up and in ever so slightly back towards the nose. Excellent. With the mouth, we're going to go just below the bottom edge of our elliptical egg shape. And it's going to line up so that it's no wider than the middle points of these eyes. This is where our mouth zone is going to be. So I'm just going to let that be a natural curve that just fits in just under that circle, ever so slightly smirking. And then I'm going to make it into a lip shape by just bringing it into a very shallow M. So up for the M, down for the middle, up for the M and down. A really shallow thin letter M like so. And then I'll just drop off a tiny bit of space on the underside as well, like so. Then just go a fair bit lower, get yourself a nice heavy bottom lip line, just shoots up, fits in a bit on either side. And we're probably going to have a whole load of shadow just underneath there, like so. So there we've got most of the shape in. To get the ear, that's a little bit harder. So if you imagine the nub of the ear, I think this might be the tragus, is just sticking out around about here, just below the middle eye level. And then we're just going to follow up to make the ear thick at the top. Just do your best to follow this one along at home. And then it's going to come down around the outside edge and just meet in. So we've got our earlobe space down below there. This line's going to curve in on the inside edge, a bit like a very difficult shell shape. And then there's another line that comes out and down like this. And the ear's just going to have a little bit of a bump around about there. So just mirror that on this side. Again, we've got the tragus, the little nub point just on the inside edge. There's a bit that drops down here to show where we've got the whole earlobe space. And this might feed up and in and around very early. The top of the nub just shoots straight up for the length of the ear, creates a nice thick earlobe shape, or ear edge shape I should say. It comes down around, pops out just a little bit before coming back in. And we get another line as well, just on the inside edge there. Now if you just imagine a very small cylinder shape covers the earlobe, just one line, two lines there, fits in a box, and then just draw in a nice big circle for his strange gem earrings one like that and then down on this side one just sort of space another nub and again nice big gem earring shape like so brilliant so we've got most of the features in now which is great let's just go straight down with the center line and we're going to get a neck in from the inside edge of this jawline just bring a line curve it down and in like so do the same on this side down and curved and in and then we'll just show the muscles in there, sort of ropey strength on the inside edge as well. One line down towards here, one line down towards here. It's all going off towards a collarbone point just below the edge of the page in this particular example. Okay, great. Now we're going to have him with his weird, furry, creepy criminal jacket. So if we go to the outside edge where we've got this ear and the earring, I'm just going to bring a curved line that comes pretty much straight down, ever so slightly in here. It's going to do the same around about here. And it's got loads of sort of fluff and feather and lining. So I'm going to imagine really sort of far out, there's going to be a vague imaginary line. It's going to come up and curve around here, up towards the top here. And it's going to do a very similar thing up and around here. And the reason why I draw this line in is so that I've got a very, very rough measuring point for putting in all the bristles and fur of his coat. It means that it's going to keep a roughly even feel as we go around. So, you don't have to make this perfect, just go ahead and start to kind of, kind of guesstimate and roughly put in 
all these areas of fur. They're very long, very sort of thin strands of material that are coming off. And they're brushing from the bottom up each time round. So they're all coming up like this. If you imagine them sprouting and growing up from this line, that will help you understand their flow much, much better. All of it curving off and in and up and round, and up and back and up again and back and up and so on. And if you've got some larger areas, if you want, you can just draw in smaller spikes in between them just to get that shape down. But that roughly just guides out for us exactly how all of that's going to be. Lots of lines come up from the inside edge and same on this side. So it brushes up and out, always up and out, moving out, getting the flow of the material and the direction of it's really important. And then again, just roughly using this guiding line, just getting loads of points and curves of the material, exactly showing how all of this is coming up and out like so, all the way up there, all the way up. Excellent. Just zigging and zagging, keeping it really loose, just getting a rough idea across like so. And off like that. So all we need to worry about now are just a few little bits. On the outside edge of the neck, just below the edge, because Kuroro's, Kuroro's um, hair is slicked back, we're just going to put in a couple tufts that slick all the way down behind the ear like there. And then same on this side here. It's nice and symmetrical, this image. And then we're just going to go up, and his hairline is going to be above this halfway point of this um, circular shape. So if we imagine just a little bit further up, the distance may be between the eyes and the mouth. It's going to be the same distance between the eyes and the hairline. It's around about here and it's fairly flat. I'll bring in a slight peak. So a very slight, slight point towards the middle. But other than that, it then just comes down the sides towards the top inside edge of the ear here and here. And this is mostly represented by a straight bit near the ear and then just a lot of just zigzagging, just keep zipping and zigzagging all the way across. And this is how we've got the hairline. It's always pointing slightly in towards the middle as you zigzag in, and then pointing in towards the middle again from the other direction. Just keep zigzagging it right across, and then all the way as it makes its way down before just going straight again. And then that's the slicked area of the hair. We might imagine a zone here, a slight arc, where we might put in a bit of a zigzag line for the light of his hair. So what I'm going to do here <clears throat> is just, excuse me, clearing my throat all the time, still getting over that cold. I'm just going to loosely zigzag all the way along here, really lightly. And that's going to be my reference point to put a line layer up on here and underneath as well, just to show we're going to have a line perhaps of light that's going to follow everything around very thin and small on the edges a little bit larger as it goes in basically when we black out his hair on the inking we're just going to leave this rough zigzagged area out ever so slightly and then the last thing we've got to do is just a few little bits so we're going to put in the hood of the eye on the inside edge there and then just shooting out here same on this side hood on the inside edge and then shooting out we might have a few lines just round the outside edge of the eye as well just to give him this kind of morbid look to the character just a few lines around that bottom outside edge there great just a couple very thin lines just over the nose to show where it points back in and then maybe we've got some reflective light beads just coming off the earrings there and there maybe it's a darker gem on the inside perhaps so then we're just going to get the cross in for the middle of his forehead it is slap bang in the middle, which is right about here, right about here. And I'm just going to put a line in that comes up and then across as well. That's how I'm going to map out this shape. And basically it's a kind of curved flame point up at the top and up at the bottom, each edge, like so, and like so. And then there's a little flat bit that comes off of each of those curved flame shapes. It's thankfully a very symmetrical image. Then with the lines that come in, if you imagine a diamond just gets a little bit thicker right in the middle, very, very small, 
And that diamond then has an outside edge as well of another series of lines, but just come up and in. Or you can always just look at a picture solely of his forehead tattoo and just copy it from there. But we will outline that and leave that on the front of his head. We're going to put in all sorts of shading lines that I won't quite talk about right now. But basically, if you imagine his light source coming from front and low, it means that a lot of this zone around the back of the fur will be in shadow. I'm just going to drop off some high shoulder line straight off about here, straight off about there. There's nothing much to show. Perhaps um, a button or two can be seen on his jacket around about this height. So I'll just get that edge in and each button just has a little cross shape. Very loosely put into the pattern of it, but you're barely going to see it. <clears throat> Maybe there's a few folds and material lines that kind of come up and around. You can keep that fairly abstract, the collar being out nice and wide because all the focus is in the middle. So again, a few shade lines are going to be coming off all of here, coming off around back in here. So just get those angles in. We're going to have the bottom underside of this area in shade, maybe up around the edge and around here will be in a slight area of shade as well, as well up and around there. And mostly the very edges of the face might come up being in slight shadow. Don't know if I'm going to ink that in a shadow, if I'll draw it in later, if I'll paint it in later when I'm going to color the image. But that is the basics of it. Let's have a look through the camera phone. Nice and simple. Brilliant. We've got ourselves a quick, simple, easy picture of Kororo Lucifer, a nice close up of the leader's face. I'm going to drop into time lapse, put a bit of ink on top of this, and I'll see you guys right at the end. <laughs> And there you have it guys, a nice, quick, simple image of Kuroro Lucifer. So if I'm gonna drop this into some color when I scan it in, I'm probably going to keep this very pale and light for the skin tones. He's got a kind of slightly brown, slightly gray eyes, and the jacket edges are gonna be blacks and purples. The button's in a bright color, and all of this fluff is in white, but I'm gonna put loads of zigzag shadow in a kind of grayish purplish tone as well. And I think the bottom of the earrings are some sort of emerald green. So guys, I hope you found this useful. We'll be making our way through various anime comic book characters. Get in the comments below and let me know what kind of character you'd like to see next time round on a super quick draw, simple, easy. We'll break it down to the shapes and then we'll build it back up. Hope you guys have a lovely week. Take care. Mm -hmm.